Hi everyone, and for this little extra video in week 15 of my no by year, I just wanted to have a kind of off the cuff chat about subscriptions and the impact they've had on my buying habits, my shopping habits in the past, and even right now and going forward. So let me just pull out my handy dandy list of the subscriptions that we actually have right now, and I'll start there. So we currently have um, some streaming services. These are Hulu and Disney Plus, but these come with our phone plan. So we don't pay separately for those. And we have looked around a little bit for phone plans, but as far as getting the service level that we want, uh, apparently the one we have, I think we have Verizon, is the most reliable. And I'm not actually sure we could get much cheaper without switching to like the newer ones. Like I've heard Mint Mobile has like a $15 a month plan. But uh, at this time, we're just not really willing to make that switch and potentially have to switch back if the service is not comparable. So anyway, we have some streaming services with our phone. We had Costco, um, had, I'll get to that later. Uh, I had a book of the month subscription. We have a car wash during the winter, a subscription to a car wash so that we can wash the salt off the bottom of our cars from the roads. And then we don't have Amazon Prime but we have and might continue to use Amazon for subscriptions, mostly for kid products like diapers. I have in the past not subscribed to a subscription box, but I have ordered an individual subscription box before because there was uh, one or two products I was interested in and it seemed like a good way to get a better price on the particular items that I wanted. Um, this was like years ago back in Texas, right after undergrad, I think. So I might have been in my early 20s. I wanted that PMD facial scrubber thing, <laughs> just for context. And I bought uh, one of the subscription boxes that had it. And I did not subscribe to that box because even back then, the idea of a subscription box where you receive a bunch of things in the mail that you didn't hand pick was a little bit odd to me. And I know some people really live for the thrill of the surprise, but for me, even Years previously, the thrill of the surprise was not worth the accumulation of junk or having to dispose of the junk uh, that I didn't necessarily ask for or want. So I've never really subscribed to makeup boxes or other product boxes, even though I think they did have a heyday several years ago. I do hope and feel like more people are waking up to the fact that if you subscribe to a subscription box, you're basically signing up to receive a bunch of stuff you didn't ask for. So I, I I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like they're dying out. Maybe my algorithm just isn't serving me those things anymore because I'm not interested in them anymore. But I do feel like those are not as prevalent as they used to be. So that's basically my history and current situation with subscriptions. Now, during this no buy year and kind of leading up to it as well, we were thinking about canceling Costco and not using Amazon anymore for our subscription products. I also was having thoughts about book of the month and whether or not I wanted to continue. And I'll, I'll get into each of those. So for Costco, we noticed that we would spend more money than we kind of thought we would at every trip and sometimes came away with more snack type foods just because they have new stuff that rotates in and out all the time. And especially me, <laughs> I'm a little bit of an impulse food shopper. If I want to try something, it's like, oh, I'm going to eat it up. It's going to be used. So I'm just going to buy it. And I like the adventure of trying new things in the kitchen and new snacks and, you know, there's so many justifications for it. If you think it's cheaper overall or, you know, if you have kids that eat snacks or there, there are many reasons why we can justify a bulk warehouse membership. And I'm not saying it's wrong to have one. I'm just saying I think right now it's wrong for me and our family. And obviously my husband's in on the decision as well. I'm not the only one. We think Costco is making us actually spend more money. We've done a couple of price comparisons for products we regularly buy at Costco. And some of them are actually cheaper at Walmart. And then the last thing was that sometimes we would find that the bulk produce that we would buy at Costco would sometimes go bad faster. Either way, we couldn't use up the whole bag of broccoli before some of it got moldy or some of the berries we would buy would already have mold on them. And I don't know if that's a warehouse situation where they're all stored together and different mold spores are floating around. Anyway, so we decided to not re-up our Costco membership and we did have the executive level where you get the check at the end of the year. They upsold us on that one <laughs> kind of hard at the beginning of the year 
So when we signed up, I mean, at the beginning of our sign-up period. So we, we I don't want to say we fell for it, but we made a calculated choice at the time, or it felt like it. Really, it probably was the advertising and marketing that we fell for and got the $120 option instead of the basic $60. But going forward, we know we can always re-sign up for the $60 option. Uh, we don't need to spend or feel pressured to spend more <laughs> to get our money back at the end of the year. I think that was the other trick why it felt okay to spend more on trying things and new products because uh, we wanted to make sure that we got our check for our membership fee at the <laughs> end of the year. So. Those are the dangers of Costco. And again, I'm sorry this is not more organized as far as my thoughts, but this is just a casual off the cuff chat about the subscriptions and their place in our lives. So that was Costco. Amazon is fraught with little traps as well, um, at least for me. We primarily use Amazon for diapers and just the associated products, wipes, and that's basically the only true essentials that we need off of Amazon. And if we time everything right, we can make it so that we have five items to get the most discount for the subscriptions. Amazon works where if you have five products in your order, you get like a 15% discount instead of a 10% if you only subscribe without having five items. So to get the most bang for our buck, we try to get five items into that order. Sometimes in the past though, that has led to me adding some items that I might want to try. Again, it's kind of similar to the Costco phenomenon where it's like, I see something kind of new to me, like a facial cleanser or a makeup product. It's, it's always like cheaper things, right, on Amazon. I'm not out here shopping for high-end um, products that I've thoroughly researched. It's like, oh, that's like $4. Let me add it to the cart so that I get the 15% discount. And also I'll get to try that $4 mascara that has really good reviews or whatever. So this would happen fairly frequently and we might have to order diapers every two or three months. So we would make an order every two or three months. If we didn't happen to have the five items, I would top it up. Sometimes I would even top it up with the five items just because I wanted to try something new and I felt like, hey, I'm getting 15% off, so it's a good deal, right? So these are the traps that the Amazon subscription format led me to fall into. And we have stores fairly close to us, you know, Walmart and Target. They're pretty cheap at Walmart. And if we do make an Amazon order, I will be very strict this year in keeping it just to the diapers and wipes and associated products because it's my no buy. But also I don't want to do that going forward. I don't want to be adding things kind of willy nilly, even if they're cheap and not impactful as far as the budget goes. Uh, I want to make sure every purchase is quality and considered. So Amazon subscriptions, they're gonna go, except for the diapers, possibly. Okay, uh, moving on to book of the month. So I was conflicted about this because I, over the years that I've had book of the month, I haven't received a book every single month. I've skipped many, many months, but over the years I have received enough boxes. I think if you get 10 or 12 or whatever boxes, you become a BFF of book of the month. And obviously they do this on purpose so that you don't wanna cancel your subscription. And I'm playing right into their hands with my thoughts and actions up to this point. So when you're a BFF, you get a, a free book on your birthday month and then a free book for the book of the year. So when the book of the year month is, I think it's March, rolls around, you get to choose a free book as well. So, and then the credits auto renew on your card. So if you're not keeping tabs on it, um, you know, after you buy a book, the next month you'll be charged for another credit, whether or not you get a book or not. So then you will eventually have to use that credit. So what happened this year is that in January, I thought, hey, I'm a BFF. I'm gonna get two books in January because it's my birthday month. And then I will take a break for a little while. So that was the plan. I was gonna skip every month after that. But then I was charged in February for the credit because it's your account always rides with one credit if you are subscribed, or at least that's how it was for me. I don't know how it works for new memberships because I've been a member for quite some, some years now. But, uh, so my account was charged in February after I made what I thought would be my last order for a while. And then March rolled around and it was book of the year. So it's like, oh, you get a free book for March as well. It's a free add-on. So you have to buy one book both of these months, just to clarify. So I had to buy a book in January and I got a free add-on, which I thought was okay. It was my birthday month and I like books. And um, it was one of my exceptions when I laid out my no-buy. And then in March, the same kind of deal happened, except I had a credit already. So I wasn't planning on necessarily taking advantage of that, but because I had a credit that automatically re-upped in February, 
because I'd forgotten that that's how it worked. Even if you skip a month, like the credit will uh, automatically apply itself from your bank account or your card or whatever to your account because of the subscription model. Um, I had a credit floating around in there and it was a free add-on month. So again, I used it to purchase a book, the credit, and then added on a free one. And then I paused my membership. So this stopped the auto renew service. So I haven't purchased any new credits. It's riding on zero and it's paused for three months. And I think this was a soft step, right? For me to get to the point of fully canceling because I still had that resistance of like, oh, but I could get two free books. These are nice quality, hardcover, the reading experience. I'm a Kindle girl now, most, most of the time. So I own a fair amount of books that I have yet to read. I have a TBR of physical books, but most of my new books now come from a Kindle and the Libby app for my local library. So, and I, I love the system actually. I was resistant to giving up the paper books. I was one of those people, um, but I came around and now when I get the new books in the mail, when I last got the book of the month order, I thought, you know what? I really do need to properly cancel because this is just a waste. I know what's gonna happen to these books after I've read them. Most of them, I don't like enough to keep. I only keep books that I would rate 10 out of 10 and would actually like to read again. And a lot of these are not just fun fiction books. They're books with a message or something I like to re-up and remind myself <laughs> occasionally. So like Ishmael is one of them. The Power of Now is one of them. I didn't even keep Atomic Habits, <laughs> um, incidentally, which is one that so many YouTubers talk about as far as the power of habits and developing habit change and all that. Maybe I should have because uh, this stopping shopping thing is actually turning into some kind of habit rather than just sheer willpower of stopping shopping. And I'm gonna get in more into that later. But um, anyway, the point I was trying to make there was I only keep books that are 10 out of 10 and the book of the month books are hardly ever 10 out of 10s. Um, and I usually end up donating them. So I have a box right now that's accumulating books that I've read and I'm gonna take it all to half price books and you know maybe get a couple dollars back, try to take them somewhere where they're gonna have another life and be resold. Um, because I always try to declutter as responsibly as possible, but I need to stop this cycle. So book of the month really needs to go. In fact, maybe I'll cancel it right now for real right here on camera. I can actually go in and update my pause so that it's hard out canceled. So please hold for a second. Okay. I'm sorry. This is taking longer than I thought it would, but it'll be worth it, right? because then you will know, you will know firsthand that I am a woman of my word. All right, I've done it here <laughs> just to show you. Your membership has been successfully canceled. Oh, and what a sad face. Okay, so one less subscription that I have and one fewer thing that I have to manage now in my life. I've been unsubscribing from email lists left and right this year as well, just because it's getting more and more annoying. I find myself increasingly annoyed by ads. And even on social media, when I'm scrolling on short form content, which I'm doing less and less, I'm so annoyed by the ads or even by influencers promoting products to me. It's getting so, ugh. And then on YouTube as well, like I am starting to notice a pattern of creators who are basically just trying to get your attention. and. I have never tried to do that. If you're new here, I mean, this is basically all it is, right? We're, we're having a chat. I'm sharing some thoughts. I'm doing a no by year. So I'm trying to improve this one area of my life and I'm sharing the process and the challenges with you. And I am not really trying to get your attention because this is more for me. And if it provides value or relatability to you, I'm so happy for that. I am not gonna discount the idea that maybe after my year, I might have something valuable to share with you as far as the tactics that I use to help me succeed or whatever. But right now, this is mostly for me and I am not trying to grab your attention. I'm not trying to sell you something. I'm not trying to gear my channel up for sponsorships or content that pushes products at you. I never want to do that. So I'm getting so much more annoyed when I see that on other content channels. Even like the titles and the format of the content, I'm getting kind of jaded by like, anytime I see like five steps for you to minimize your closet, the things, the essential things you must do to change your life, um, 12 steps to have it change or whatever. 
Anyway, I am getting more annoyed by this. The grabs for my attention are just grating at my brain a little bit more. So I'm <laughs> strengthening my resolve to keep everything simple over here and keep it real, keep it relatable, keep it uh, unfiltered and honest and not motivated by any form of consumerism. So if that sounds good to you, <laughs> please subscribe. Look at that. How smooth is that? Um, please add this as a subscription while you minimize possibly your other subscriptions in your life. <laughs> um, because again, this subscription to my channel will not result in any purchases being pushed on you. I'm not going to upsell you to the next level of Costco. I'm not going to ask you to add another thing to your cart so that you've watched five videos or whatever it is. Oh my gosh. I'm having more fun with this, I guess. Too much fun. Um, <laughs> with the ridiculous idea of subscribing. Uh, but, you know, if, I guess if you want to see my face again and have a chat with me again and, you know, possibly leave a comment on your thoughts and experiences, I love to read them and reply uh, and have that little dialogue with other people out there who are thinking about this and, you know, possibly struggling with it or possibly succeeding with it and have some tips to give me. I love it. There's some positivity that comes out of social media connection, I guess. And while YouTube is not straight up social media, I do feel like the longer form content gives you more of a chance to get to know somebody and experience the ideas and practice paying attention, to be honest, for a longer time. Yeah, there's some, there's some positivity connection from the social aspect of what it is that we're doing here. Okay, this was a massive tangent. Basically, the bottom line of this video is subscriptions are probably not serving you as well as they could be or are set out to be by the people who market them. So you might want to consider unsubscribing. Uh, really evaluate the subscriptions in your life, whether they bring you value or whether they're trying to upsell you, whether they encourage you to buy more and get rid of as many as you can in my book, in my <laughs> book of the month. Okay, we gotta go. Things are getting unhinged. <laughs> See you next week and bye for now. Gear my channel up for sponsorship, spon sponsorships, sponsorships, sponsorship, sponsorship, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs>